Okay, so I could like people want fake. Yeah, people always want drama. Like people, like, people like always want drama. But I will not give you guys drama. Everyone has like a right on their own opinion, right? Such as freezing for tier two to be a mid tier. That's also an opinion. I actually, actually, I have nothing against Ellis. I just think some of his opinions are very like controversial for an analyst, which I like to me about. Like I like to just troll everyone, right? So, if anything, I think Ellis is like pretty, pretty good caster. When I watch LCK, he he's he, he has knowledge, so he's not a bad caster. Maybe we can oink and we can do some some shit, guys. We can do some content. We need drama. It's so easy to create drama, man. You just screenshot something I say and, and post on Reddit, and you already have drama. It's usually how it goes. If I'm having, a, if I want to choose a miner, I think like Doimbi would be a good miner because he like likes to play roam champs. So then like me and Cuffs can play aggressive bot. And like don't can just run bot. Faker is like a hey, faker would be a better jungler and we rookie, like rookie would just be left alone on the top lane. Faker would be like a really fucking good jungler. Like this guy is so so high IQ. So he would like jungle for us, smurf. And rookie would just be like top lane, he would just scale for late game. And we have like a late game security in rookie. No, but knight is like a lane kingdom player. Like you need to like you need to have like a decent, like different decent mix of players, you know. Like I am a lane kingdom player, and knight is a lane kingdom player. So we can't have like two lane kingdom players. We need to have like Doimbi that likes to roam and we have like me and Cups in the bot lane and then uh, we have Faker who is yeah just like he's gonna smurf and then we have Rookie who is gonna like just do his own thing on top and like that would be like a good team what does it say here when you said said that Khan wasn't a great interesting take kinda agree <laughs> Khan is easily the worst man he made a bunch of arguments from Mata but he was still up from Khan <laughs> okay like that's like a <laughs> yeah yeah like, I think Mata was like not that great Honestly, like Reddit is like really fucking hilarious. All the silver opinions just popping off. Are we gonna do our world 20 list or what? Are we doing it, guys? The madman. Yeah, I will not do it with G2 players. I think that's like because I, I mean, I don't even if I, I don't even. I, it's fine getting flame Reddit and stuff, but I actually don't want to get into like bad relations with like LPL or like LCK fans because they don't like they don't get me as you guys do. You know, you know what I mean, guys. Like, you guys get me on a deeper level, but LCK. LPL, fanatic fans, they don't, you know. You guys, you guys understand me. I'm an FNC fan, but I understand you. <laughs> Good job, man. <laughs> it was a joke, it was a joke. Not like, I'm just like generalizing, right? And then it's, I'm from China, I feel insulted. <laughs> no, it's a joke, it's a joke, guys, come on. I'm just saying like, I'm not, I, it's usually like, for example, there was a situation where the LPL fans or RNG fans, right? They were flaming Vadid because Vadid Howard Vane. So okay, Vadid's name. Okay, Vadid's name is Vain. Okay, I'll make it a bigger font. This is Vadid's name, and in Korea it's pronounced Vane. So he was hovering Vane when we played against RNG, and after the games he was like getting messages that he's like really suspecting Uzi because he is hovering Vane and Vane is Uzi's main champion. <laughs> <laughs> then he was getting like hated by the fans and he was like really shocked why are they hating on him <laughs> so that's like for example it's like a really blunt example right but i'm just saying people everyone can misinterpret things on their own way like everyone has their own perspective of viewing things so a lot of things can be like we finding insulted insulting or uh... okay so wait, how do we do this like we go on okay, let's just see what teams are qualified it's a spicy shit right rng fbx ig LCK, wait, SKT down one, SKT down one, and what? I don't know, man. Griffin. Honestly, like it's actually a pretty hard to do, like a top twenty. It's it's a pretty it's a pretty fun hard one. Need to splice fanatic. Okay, like I'm not gonna put any splice players in top twenty. Like no no offense. Like splice players are good, but they're like not gonna be top twenty. TL, I'm not gonna put any third team in top 20 as well. This is like the teams that would deserve to go in top 20. Since I'm in G2, I will leave G2 out of it. Honestly, there's like a lot of good players here, right? So how do we do this? I'm gonna need some help from you guys because you guys, uh, okay, who is the best, like who is the best out of these players? Who will be the best player in, in the, like this guy? Is it this guy? <laughs> is it uh, this guy? <laughs> I'm joking guys, okay? I think like it's really, it's really fair to put someone who won. So like, it's between like Faker, Cleet was performing pretty well, if I'm not mistaken. SKT Me Jungle was performing pretty well. Okay, so we should like maybe we should maybe make like a pool first a pool of like players, right? K 
Okay, so there's like S, let's get S, S tier. S -tier. It's honestly, top 20 lists are really hard. Like I, I actually, I kind of feel bad for like casters to do it. I mean, like it's kind of fun, but like they create dramas and stuff, but like it's like, it's hard to be fair. Let's, let's go like, let's go easily. Like Faker, Uzi, Ming, Karsa. Okay, I'm actually like going too far right now. But like I'm watching, I'm saying from what I, from what I watched. Okay, let's go. Uzi played really well. Faker played really well. I know, I know that much. Doinby played really well. Do Doinby, even though the thing with Doinby is he doesn't play like Akali and Silas, so he will like. I think maybe he's like not S tier. Like I think he will like not be S tier. Uh, the shy, the shy was kind of smurfing again recently. Yeah, sure, sure. To be honest, I think maybe like Jackie Lau deserves to be there, even though I kind of think of Jackie Lau as like Kaisa Munchik. I mean, he's like pretty good on like some like other AD carries as well, but like he does very ex very well with Kaisa. So plays Kaisa every time it's up. So you're probably not gonna put him like rank one, right? But I think like it's not even like I think it's more like Jekyll doesn't like I think Jekyll does well when like, they lose both, but they probably lose both because support. Like you don't like okay, let me understand, let me explain something to you guys. Like when you lose both, it's probably support difference. Jekyll Love when he's playing Kaisa, if he loses both, it's not because he inted, it's because something went bad in the support jungle department. But he usually plays well from behind and just farms up, but it's it's fine. Let's just let's just remove him, how you guys said. And Baolan was really like not so good to split. The games I watched. Uh, Khalid, yeah, Khalid deserves to be there. De definitely right. The thing is that I haven't watched enough. I don't know, it's like not enough sample size to like say. For example, how I can maybe like, my criteria would be like, let's see, at first like we should get like what criteria is there, like past international experiences, right? You can't really rate a player that hasn't had like international experience. It's really hard to do that. You don't know how he's gonna perform. Recency bias of like performance in playoffs, summer splits and playoffs. So international experiences and recency bias. So we can judge from MSI teams really easily. That like, let's say from IG. From IG, the shy definitely is ST, right? Even though he was kind of inting an MSI, I'm not gonna lie. But the shy has like ro the roles. Let's say he has the role skills of being ST. And then there is like rookie who should be in there, but he hasn't been performing to his rookie level in a lot of games I've watched, honestly. He's still like obviously really good. But we're talking about not the skill of a level here, we're talking about performance. Like to be in, to make Gliss, you have to like, you have to evaluate performances. It's it's too hard for me to like, like there will be a lot of people who say, oh, what the fuck, I didn't put this guy on the list, I didn't put this guy, but I haven't even watched all the games. So how can I like judge every player from this one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight teams when I haven't watched their games? I just watched their playoffs games. Maybe this is like a bad, bad, in, bad endeavor to take. Maybe it was not the best one. Yeah, I mean, I, I, will, I will not put Choi for sure, but like SKT players, the thing is SKT players have all performed well. I, I, even Khan is playing well on his champions. Cleed and Faker are obviously smurfing. So Teddy and Effort look really good. They are good, I think. I think they are good, but they look really, really good because the mid jungle is really smurfing. That's that's my perspective. But I'm just, a, I have just an AD carry perspective right now. <laughs> from RNG, from RNG games I watch, Karsa and their bottom is playing really fucking well. But I actually haven't watched all of the LPL finals because I was traveling. So like I just like I watched the first two games I think, and then like I stopped watching because yeah I was on a flight. We were flying to Athens, so I actually never watched them. And I just like took off the flight. I mean we came, we arrived in Athens, and I just heard FPX one. I'm like okay, like top twenty is like too hard. Okay, I, I will I will put the shy. This FPX top man, he's really insane. I think yeah I, I don't know it's it's hard it's actually really hard to to rate. Yeah I'm I'm not putting G two players here like. G2 players would be rank one, obviously, because we won MSI. So, like, come on, recency bias, guys. Look what I look what I said. Fast international experiences and recency bias. Like, Wunder can win a game with Soraka top and how many top players can say they won a game with Soraka top and like Wunder is obviously on another level of other top players right now in the world, and it's not even this, this debatable. Actually, I should be an analyst now. Like, I have like really good arguments for the <laughs> for the players that I have watched. Like, I can't judge all the players. I can't judge all the players. Can't actually. Like, I always judge them by their scores. <laughs> it's actually the easiest way to judge a player. You go to their match history and you see match history. So Khan, 204, 06 from a start. Like, he has a, actually, like, pretty insane scores. The last, like, ever since LCK Summer Playoffs, he had only two bad games, 04 and 06, and the rest of the games, he seems to be smurfing. So maybe Khan is one of the better top players right now. Maybe he's one of the better top players right now. What, what do you... <laughs> I mean, like, 06 is a rough one, right? But, like, that's could be a lot of games. Niguri, you see, like his scores are like a lot, a lot worse than Khan's scores. <laughs> he went to one and nine and GP. <laughs> I want to see how they go one and nine. It's like some, some crazy int happening, right? Uh, yeah, like that's what I thought. Like Niguri, like doesn't doesn't have as insane scores as Khan. <laughs> <laughs> Who 
was the grief? Uh, Dorant. Oh yeah, actually I just said it. Like I'm, mean, I'm really lagging, guys. I'm really fucking lagging. This guy also has like bad scores. Like honestly, I can't judge players by their scores. <laughs> he, he lost really fast. <laughs> he lost really fast, really fast. Okay, this is actually a failed mission, guys. Like, <laughs> this is just a failed mission. I can do best players. I think best in players is like we can we can agree to best in players because I have not enough experience in watching uh, NA. I mean uh, East. And we will do, uh, since it's only vest, we will do top 10 lesson players. And we will not put G2 because G2 will take half of them. <laughs> G2, Spy, uh, Fnatic, DL. Okay, we will do like top 12, top 12 players. Uh, wait, C9 and Clutch. Clutch, right? Uh, top, top 12. <laughs> we, we meet in the middle. We meet in the middle. Okay, well, this, this is like first one. So for the first one, I think it's like... Pretty fair uh, to probably like put me as the first one. I can like argue for myself. I just uh, I just rolls up to the to AD carry this year and I won two titles and MS and MSI. I was uh, the first all pro AD carry. I also have the, the highest amount of two v two kills in regular season. I also have the highest amount of dying two v two in playoffs. So. I'm pretty much an all-around player that does everything, kills and dies with people, and just all around the place. Uh, it's pretty fair of me to vote myself number one, I would say. What do you guys think? I think that's correct, right? Second. Well, second, then we will put Jankos. The only reason he's not number one is because he's actually playing with me. So the the rankings should be like a bit more, not, not so like straightforward. When he's playing with me, he can't like really be in rank one because then like we might as well just like I might as well just play with I don't know with who who is <laughs> if I play with Lyra then Lyra should be rank one as well or, or what like come on guys like and then uh, <laughs> I hope Cup sleeps <laughs> that's actually such a genuine comment by a fanatic fan in my Twitch chat it actually made me laugh <laughs> the third one the third one is probably then. Um, like it has to be someone with the players, right? Well, Miki X died. <laughs> Miki X, my bro Miki, died quite a bit level two. So we're gonna put him on fifth. He deserves the fifth for now. I think we should put Wonder. Wonder was pretty like hard smurfing with Vlad. Uh, Obviously, it wasn't as big of a top difference as jungle difference. Then we should put Caps. Even though Caps had his like bad games, it's still Caps. So even Caps on bad games is like better than like I don't know Nemesis in his best games. And then there is like Miki X. Yeah, and that's like a pretty decent ranking for now. And then we have to go on, the, on the number six. Number six. Okay, so number six, I will actually put Hillisung here. That's just that's just like that's just like my experience. From my experience, Hillisung is like the best the best player I've had against. I don't know he pressures so much. Uh, he's just really smart about he plays. So my this is like my my biased opinion, right? Of my experience. And then we should put probably Reckless in seventh. I think Reckless has had like a really really good split in general. I don't know, plays really well. Also, like the meme around Reckless not playing like a lot of champions. Well, he kind of like disproved it this year because he's like, he's basically the father of <laughs> Gar and Yumi <laughs> and the mother of Karma. <laughs> like, he, he's created Karma and Garen bot, and no, and no other care, AD carry has created that. So, Reckless is actually one of the, believe it or not, one of the most diverse AD carries in the world right now because he has strategies that are not only Sivir and Tristana. And that is something you would not say at the beginning of this year. So, kudos to Reckless. He's definitely. Then there is, uh, I think, uh, I believe deserves to be on the list. It's like a slightly bit below Reckless. I think he's just like just a worse Reckless. He likes to play Sona, but he doesn't really like, doesn't really play two of meta champions. He plays only one. So he's like half the Reckless. So he should be like one below. And honestly, on AD carries, I think Reckless is better than Double Lift, anyways. So I think this is like, not saying, it doesn't mean that Double Lift is bad. Like, we've now Double Lift fans will go and Plus, it's right, and Flame is saying Double is bad. It's, it's not true. It just means that Reckless is just slightly better. Double is still a great player, right? Don't get me wrong, guys. <laughs> and then, uh, oh, actually, yeah, I forgot about Core DJ. I, I think I'll put Core DJ here. <laughs> and I'll put uh, Svenskern here. And then Double Lift. Okay, Double Lift went a little bit down, but it's like, <laughs> it's, it's nothing. It's nothing personal. I think Svenskern deserves to be on the list because uh, he was really smurfing. I think the reason why Sinan even won games against Steel was because of Svenskern. Granted, he did play really bad at game 5, but he was lost in draft. He played Jarvan against champions with 5 dashes, if I remember right. Roxa. I mean, honestly, guys, you, you expect me to put like every player there? Like, I can't just... There is 12 players. This is top 12, guys. This is not not top 10 like it's not top 20 this is top 12 like i need to like really mix it up i'm telling you the g2 players are taking too much space 
Maybe we should start like removing G2 players. We can remove all the G2 players and like leave only me there. <laughs> no, I was actually I was gonna put Kobe. Because I think this is I think this is the I think this is the only four players I would put from NA. Because then there is like who else is there? There is Plyce. I think Kobe had like really good performance. Like he's been like a rock solid for his team. I also think actually Chachi was performing pretty well in playoffs. Uh or not in, like in Gauntlet, I mean. But I don't know, man. Chachi likes to die as well. So who else was Plyce was there? Zerzo played pretty well. I mean, Human has some pop of games. Oh, it's really hard to judge now. This is like these are the players that count to my mind. And now like I don't know who is like the 12th one, for example. Huni, yeah, yeah, sure. Huni was actually pretty much smurfing in playoffs. Jensen, I mean, sure, sure, Jensen. But Jensen, like, he plays well. But is he like more impactful to his team than the rest of them I put? Because I think like Kojija and Dowellift are more impactful to TL than Jensen is. And that's a fair assessment to make, as they have won without Jensen, Jensen two times. Humanoid, yeah. I mean, like, there is Nemesis, Brox, like, there is like a... Yeah, I mean, Nemesis and Humanoid, they're both, like, close to that list. Nemesis has been, like, really solid for Fnatic this split, and especially in playoffs. He's been putting us some really solid performances. He's even made my mid laner not buy Mercs. A couple of games where the Mercs were very, very efficient by. So he has, a, like, additional effort of mind-controlling his opponents. Uh, so... There is some there is some of the aspects that he brings to his team that other players don't. Pretty good on TF, Corky. You're so arrogant, reckless is way better than you as an AG carry. Okay, sure. I mean, like, what can I say? You're right. You're you're entitled to an opinion. Probably listening to one of those caster narratives as well, where casters say how many mistakes I make or how many mistakes everyone makes. But the truth is, like, every player makes mistakes. It's just like. Some players are judged by mistakes more than the others. And some of the mistakes that others make is 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 uh, also is also pretty big. Kobe, I I don't know who is on top. Like honestly, like this is a hard one to, to make because if I put humanoid, people like where is Nemesis? If I put Nemesis, people like where is humanoid? And everyone like, but I do think that Nemesis is Nemesis is the most like he's been pretty impactful for his team and he's been pretty like he's been pretty like how is it called solid? Like you can rely, you can really rely on like Nemesis for example. Is not into the game. Like he hasn't into one game in, that I remember in playoffs. Even like, like he hasn't into the game for. So I, I don't even know when he was last time into the game, right? Like when he loses, he loses gracefully, and when he wins, he wins without showing his lead. So that's like a really good thing about Nemesis. I think he's like he's kind of like consistent for his team. Whereas Humanoid is really flippy. I mean, he does like pop off on Kali very often. <laughs> Actually, like pretty often that I think about it. But maybe he's just an Akali one trick, I'm not sure. Or maybe Akali just OP. Feels like everyone pops up on Akali, plays Reckless with Nemesis. But I think Heli Heli's Sling and Reckless were like the best performers for Fnatic this playoffs. So it would be unfair to put Reckless down. But it's such a hard list. Like, like it's honestly, I actually really hate like ranking our own players because I'm obviously gonna troll if I'm ranking our own players. I'm obviously gonna put them in the top five, all of us. And uh, then it's like the, the list already because bias, but like you see people. People can make actually like arguments. Oh yeah, Reckless was a better performer than you. He should be higher than you. That's an argument. I'm not saying that's true. People can make arguments for that because they were killing us on lane. They can also make an argument. He was playing better than me. They can make an argument. Nemesis is playing better than Cups, right? They probably can't make an argument that Beeple was playing better than Wunder because Beeple was pretty much smurfing on Jax only, whereas Wunder was like playing really well in the games. There wasn't Jax in the game. <laughs> okay, I'll just remove the G2 ones. I'll make a really fast one and like don't don't judge me. It'll be like out of my head. Because LC LC starts first. Actually, I think like Sanskarn is actually more viable than Cordy J. Uh, did I forget Kobe? Actually, I think I kind of have to add Huni because Huni, honestly, guys, the difference, top difference playoffs when Quack was playing was like pretty high a little against. Like Kunin was playing really insane some games and he was doing really well. So I think he actually deserves to be in the list. I think actually the reason why Clutch is the world is a big part of Huni's individual performance in the top lane. And also props to like uh, Eric, Eric Kodisan. He has like a lot of games where he's like zero deaths. So he's obviously like doing his job for the team. There is like Huni and Kodisan are doing pretty well. Yeah, I mean, I think Huni was better than Vipo this playoffs. If you if you look at Vipo, I mean, like honestly, Vipo like sometimes Vipo is like really fucking insane, like on Aatrox or like on Jax against us. Usually, really smurfs, but he doesn't really like smurf with other champions. I, I don't know what I don't know what to say. Like it's there's so many good players here, right? That like deserve to be in the list. Like also like 
you can make a case for Zergza and like right now, right now the list starts to get harder, right? Because who do you actually put on the list? You can put Jensen, Zergze. Yeah, I think that's like fair. Jensen. That's like a pretty fair list. Because if you actually it's just if you look at the playoffs performances, right? Like Broxa and Beepo were Fnatic's worst performance, whereas all of these players were one of the best performance for their teams. Like I don't remember Kobe having a, a, a awful game. I don't remember like Zergza having a really bad. Uh, this is judging by Gauntlet, right? But this is like their most recent games. And Zergza had like a really good split. He went and had like a lot of fucking bad games. But it's also it's also harder to race rate Broxa because he played against Yankos, whereas like Sunscreen played against Xmitty, you know, or like someone else. I don't know who else to play, played against. They played against two teams in playoffs, right? Uh, so they played against like C9, right, or some shit. No, a CLG, I mean. So it's also like these NA players work like look better. So there is like maybe like all fanatic members do deserve to be there. Like Brox and Vipo is like rank 11 and 12. Honestly, like it's really hard, and these lists are like really int. And now I just killed so much time, and it was like pretty fucking int. But at least I entertained you guys for some entertainment, some drama, some storytelling, some good games, some 0 12 echo games. Oh, is that. Oh my god. No way, he's not, he's not that. No fucking way! What?! But the like, how?! How does Guardian, like, oh my god, it's lost, just FF, FF. Oh, uh, that's so cringe. It's just, it's just really triggering when, when I, I see, like, people, when I see someone, like, as a player, you have to have a lot of ego to to succeed. And then when someone writes that you you don't play that you don't play as well as someone else, when that's not true, it's like really triggering, you know. But it's just fans. Erika's fans also gets flamed by G two fans, I assume, and saying they're he's he's worse than me. And you also have also have to think for his perspective when he reads that or finds it in interviews or whatever that he gets really triggered because he's playing this role for eight years and he's been on top of the on top of his role on top of his class basically for the, ever since he started playing. Like Erika's is actually like one of the biggest prodigies there is like he literally like joined Fnatic when he was like 15 or something isn't it or i don't know 14 like i don't know what it is it's like really insane when you think about it like he's actually like he's a fucking superstar i don't think the double lift is worse than both reckless and i well in the final i did go two games deathless just saying two games zero deaths let me check reckless had zero games deathless zero i had two games deathless zero deaths just just a thought for head just, just a slight thought for